The name is Coder, Kellis Coder. Today we'll have a look at Cloak and Dagger, the movie from 1984 and the Argate video game. And we will spill all the juicy secrets of the American government. <laughs> In the early 80s, kid empowerment movies were all the rage. We had War Games, we had Daryl that we did a video on where we had pole position. And we had E.T. for example, where this kid Henry Thomas outstages all the adults. Now Henry Thomas also plays the lead in Cloak and Dagger. He plays the character of Davy. Davy is a kid with an overactive imagination. He loves playing role playing games and video games with his annoying little friend in Morris's store. Now Morris is a 35 year old overweight geezer who likes spending his time with 10 and 11 year old kids. I get a hair sniffing vibe from that one. But even Morris every now and then gets fed up of these little kids. So he plays into uh, Davies' imagination and he sends them on a special mission. infiltrate their seventh level mm -hmm. and go to their vending machine and pick me up a bag of Twinkies. Aww. There's a secret message inside. Yeah, a special mission to get Twinkies to fill his overfilled gut even more. Prepare to penetrate the enemy stronghold. Follow me in. This is what I meant by embarrassing. When Davy and his annoying friend penetrate the enemy stronghold, he sees a guy in front of the elevator carrying a gun. So Davy doesn't dare to stand in the elevator with a guy with a holstered gun, but he loves spending his days in a messy office with a 35 year old overweight recluse. Anyway, so Davy takes the stairs while his little friend takes the elevator. Davy a Atari 5200 cartridge. And this is where the whole movie starts coming off the rails. Yeah, because Cloak and Dagger was never released on the Atari 5200. It was an arcade conversion kit for Robotron. It was a dual joystick shooter. When the movie was in production, Agent X was almost finished. Universal then persuaded Atari to actually rename Agent X into Cloak and Dagger. That way they uh, had friends with benefits, you know, a nice little movie tie-in and a nice little video game tie-in. Nobody knew that four months later Henry Thomas, his little friend E.T. and Howard Scott Warshaw would kill off the whole video game industry with their game E.T. Well done guys, well done. The scientist under his dying breaths gives Davy a coat. Tell the FBI one million three hundred twenty-nine thousand. So later in the movie we find out that if you hit that score, the cartridge reveals all the juicy top secret plans of the American government. That of course a lot of different spies are interested in. And we all know now with Snowden and Assange that America has a lot of shady, shady secrets to reveal. I mean, you gotta hate the American government, right? Fucking bunch of hypocrites. Russia is bad, they invade a country. They invaded a country under false pretenses, killed people in the Middle East left and right, millions of them, started wars in Libya, Syria, Yemen. I mean, come on, for fuck's sake. Calling Russia bread? That is calling the kettle black, isn't it? Fucking hypocrites. <sighs> Rent over. So Davy takes the cartridge to his genius friend Morris. You're the genius around here. Our genius will play a two joystick shooter on an Atari 5200, which the game was never released on and reach a million and three hundred twenty-nine thousand points in order to get to 
the juicy secrets. This guy isn't a genius. He's a bloody yo-yo. Davey realizes that his little friend is kidnapped. The spies want to exchange her for the cartridge. So he steals the cartridge from Morris and he goes into this cloak and dagger mission to get her free. While fat, greasy Morris is playing with his joystick. What a genius! This is what a real genius would have done. What do you mean? You mean this, right? <gasps> because what we will be doing is we're going to prime the score to 1.3 million. That way we don't have to wrangle the worst joystick for hours and hours and hours to get to the juice. So let's jump in. So first I downloaded the zip file, cloak.zip, and then I run it with main cloak debug to see if it starts. That looks good, all right. Now let's unzip this zip file and put it in a nice directory and delete the zip file afterwards. That is very important, otherwise it will always boot from the zip file. In order to prime the score, I need to know where the score is located in RAM. And first I need to know where the RAM is located to reduce the amount of searching. So I go to Arcade Restoration because they always have the documentation where the ROMs and the RAM and in, not in this case because it's a rare machine. Luckily it's only 65k that we need to look through. At least we can deduce where the ROM is located by using main list XML and then the name of the game. And every ROM is then listed in this XML file. So the entries with main CPU, these are the ROM chips. There are two of 8 kilobytes and two of 16 kilobytes. So let's search for the RAM location. So in order to find the score, what I did is play the game a little and dump the whole memory. And I give it the name of the score. So 1052, there was the score, 1102 and 1937. Then I run them through compare to see what has changed between those runs. After a lot of browsing, I found out that 0460 contained the score. But I also knew already, seeing how often it changed, that the first thousand hex bytes were reserved for video RAM. So what I did was actually set a breakpoint there and see how 0460 was being set, basically reverse engineering how the screen memory was updated. In order to make reverse engineering easier, I ran desm cloak.esm 4000, 8000. Later I did comma FFF to get the whole disassembly. This was actually tricky to find out. Um, it seems that the CIA didn't want their secrets to be revealed too easily. But when reading through, I saw often that 0460 came in combination with LDA Redirection 22, that one. And then I looked a bit further and I always saw this combination with EB05, Jump C Protein EB05. And I wondered, hmm, what does that do? And this revealed everything. We're masking off the bottom nibble, then we compare it to 10. If it's not 10, we add 6 to roll it over, and then we add the character 30. This changes integer values into character values. I was looking for character values, all I needed to do was look for integer values and have a bit of luck. And luck I had, because I ran a couple of finds, and then I uh, realized that in the four finds that I did, 027E always popped up. So here you see I'm looking for uh, the whole memory range for 10 to 50, that was the score. And I see, hey, 027E, that is indeed the first thousand bytes, which must be RAM. And look at that, that is where my score is. Nice. And this is probably the score of the other opponent, because you have two players. And we saw an offset by Y. So all I had to do was look for 027E, a store, and there you go. And before that, it's loaded with zero. So as soon as the game starts, it will set the whole score and a lot of these other ones to zero. Now I'm not a scared person, I just change it to 1-3. Let's see what happens. Otherwise I can always make a hack hook, but we just want to get to the 
1,329,000 quickly. Ah, so I don't really care about these other ones. If it breaks, we'll do a hack hook. And otherwise, uh, it works. So that LDA0 is located at 70 OD. So I need to check in which ROM that is. So that is the second ROM file. And let's look for that address. It's of course offset. A9, that is load A. Yeah, and let's change this to a 1 and see what happens. And we can also see if we have uh, ROM protection. Sometimes you're not allowed to update ROMs because there's a checksum on there. These are always the exciting things. Main, cloak, and then debug, start, F5. Come on, run, 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 run. I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious. Okay, and I had to find out what the start was. There we go, yes. It's still running, so that is good. We don't have any CRC protection. Yeah, it says that we have changed it, but the game is perfectly happy. And there we go, 101010, yes! Having tested our hypothesis, I figured if I change it to 1 2, then we would have a score 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 to. I only need to score 90,000 points, which is really easy. So let's change this to 12, save it, and then let's see what the CIA is up to. I will start at level 9, that way it's not too difficult, but gives a lot of uh, possibilities to earn a score. If you start at the ground level, I notice that with such a high score, it could be mistaken that you're actually on your way back up. And then you run across the room and you finish the game. I will show that, uh, because this game actually has an ending. And as you can see, with a million points on the counter, it is really, really crowded with mines and robots. And there we go! Now look at the score. I think that with our little hack, I may have overwritten uh, something in the level score, because look at that. Question mark, greater than, copyright sign. Hey, but points are points. We want to get to the secret juicy information. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. Keep on counting, do it a bit quicker, jeez. That is one thing of this game. Uh, these cutscenes are fun, but they slow it down. It really slows down the pace. Oh no! No, we didn't make it! Ah, continue, continue! Oh, oh! All these damn mines and these spidery thingy robots and everything is onto me! Ah! Oh no! Even when I hacked it, it's almost impossible to get to it. Otherwise, I hack it even further. Oh, 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 no, 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 oh, so close, so close, come on, come on, come on, come on, kill the fucker, kill the fucker, oh, yes, we got there, let's see, Lee Harvey Oswald, CIA employee, I knew it, assignment, silent coup by assassinating JFK, Johnson will become the 37th president and he agreed to keep the Vietnam War going in order to financially strengthen the new world order and interstellar order, huh? Johnson is guaranteed immunity. He and his descendants will be financially taken care of. Next. What is next? What is next? Show me, show me, show me. Interstellar General Schlico landed in Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> Hillary Rodham Clinton. I knew she was a lizard people. Lizard people! Mission merge new world order with interstellar order. Wipe out Middle East in preparation of the interstellar landing fleet. Well, that makes sense. The fleet will wipe out Earth's population with the exception of New World Order members and 500,000 human slaves. Status active. Um, I'm not going to look any further. If the Clintons are involved, you uh, get suicided. So uh, I, I keep it at that. Turn off, turn off, turn off. So there you have it. We got it to 1,329,000 points. And the cartridge spilled some very, very juicy American state secrets. Yeah, the arcade game is actually really, really nice. I had never played it before. I only seen it in this movie and I assumed it was just a movie prop. I never knew it was actually an arcade release. So when I recently procured the Atari 50th anniversary uh, game for Xbox, I saw the Cloak and Dagger arcade game and I was like, I need to rewatch this movie. 
because playing the game was really, really cool. You have these cutscenes with Agent X doing this, playing yo-yo, sweating, his head being pulled off. It's really nice and innovative. So I figured the movie must be cool as well, but I hadn't seen it in over 30 years. And no, the movie doesn't hold up anywhere near as good. It's really quirky, it's really over the top. And frankly, the only thing that makes it a Tom Holland movie is this scene. You know what I'm gonna do to you, boy? I'm gonna blow both your kneecaps off. It won't kill you, but it'll hurt worse than any dying you can imagine. Then you know what I'm gonna do to you? Huh? Shoot him, Danny. Shoot him. I'm gonna shoot you in the stomach. And then when you beg for me to finish the job, I won't do it. I'm just gonna watch you die. I mean, I love movies where kids are in genuine danger. I sound like a fucking psychopath, don't I? The first time I saw a kid being killed in the movie was when I was 11 years old in John Carpenter's awesome assault on Precinct 13 and it sent shivers down my spine. I think if you really want to get a horrific moment it's put a child in danger. They don't even need to get into harm but just putting a child in danger is already like oh my god it's terrible. Yeah, Just like this movie is really it's, it's a 5.5 out of 10. It's amusing, maybe when you're 11 years old and it's fun, but yeah, it didn't hold up as much as, for example, Chucky and Friday Night did that Tom Holland also wrote. I wanted to say Tom Hanks. Also starts with an H. And Tom Hiddleston and Tom Hardy. What is it with actors and Tom H? Anyways, I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in the next one. The name is Coder, Callus Coder.